let's see, last time we got through section 10, I think. Yes, did. Oh yeah, so we did 10, 5, and we had to stop and go back and do 10, 4. Oh, let's go. Cool. Um, any, oh, first off, any questions from homework before I just go? Okay. All right. Um, you guys remember the last thing we talked about was something like this here. Structures would say rationalize the denominator. And radicals are one of the most basic forms of irrational numbers, unless they're doable. Right? If you can, like, square root of 4 is not irrational because it's just 2. talked last time about, I call this complete the root, because I kind of give it what the root needs. What does the root need for this to work? How many things? Three things. But is the right way to look at this, does it need two more nines? Good, because the nine already by itself is two threes, so how many more threes does it need? One more. So then you give it, so what's wrong with doing this? The B, no, 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 I gotta oh. do the same thing to top model. Could that three ever get inside here like I wanted to? No, because it doesn't have a root on it. So you do have to multiply by that root of what you need. Or else how could it ever get in there to help out the inside? So if it would have been a fourth root, I would have needed two more threes, so forth. Let that be that simple. So we're going to go on top. I'll do the top. Okay. Right on the top, you just get those things put together. What happens on the bottom, of course? Okay, I like it. So you get cube root. 27, which of course is 30. So the bottom, is the bottom irrational anymore? No, it's not. It's a nice whole 3. You got the 27 from multiplying 9 by 3, correct? Beautiful. Okay. Or you could have done 3 times 3, it's 3 cubed. And you would have still gotten three on that next step. But like, so you guys might get to the point where we can skip this step altogether because you you put the thing here that would make it a whole three. Uh, you can kind of show yourself, yeah, it does make a whole three. Okay. You guys doing all right? No. You feeling it? Yes. Even more? I understand. Uh, all right. What about this one here then? Wait a minute, just to make this not as bad, let's make this a 7. Uh -huh. Start with the easy parts of this. How many more A's do you need? But the root needs how much total? The root needs five total. I've got two right now, so I need three more. 
A's. Leave a little space for the number. I'm going to worry about the number in a minute. How many more B's? One. So now look at the number. I don't need four more eights. If you do this, it's not wrong. It's just going to, you're overloading it. You're giving it more than it really needs. Because the eight already is good. Right? Right? Yes. So then how many more twos do I need? Two more. Two more. Which is? <clears throat> okay. So if you get on the top, you get 28 A Q T M. See, all that shit just goes together. The top is just reacting. I'm focused on the bottom, and the top just gets whatever it gets. Because I'm trying to make the bottom look better. Now, some of you guys may know this is just going to be 2AB. I, I constructed it to come out to be 2AB, but let's, let's see that happen. So you get the fifth root of 2 cubed times 2 squared is 2 to the fifth. A squared A cubed is A5. B4B is B5. So sure enough, the bottom just becomes... This kills all those. So I just get 2AB. So the bottom became nice and the top just became gross. It's sort of like when you clean up your room and your little kid shoved it all in the closet or under your bed or in your sister's room. Out just shove it all somewhere and go, look, it's so nice. Look, it's so beautiful down here. And on the other side is like, Wah. So it's just, I want the bottom to be nice, because it's already gross to be divided by something. Might as well make that part nice. That is one way to look at this. Okay. So that's why I like to call this complete the root. You give it what it needs to make enough stuff inside to satisfy this dude. That's really all this is. So, you know there's another level of this. Now you do, anyway. Here's the other level of this. Uh, what do you got, Joe? I don't know, man. This is an idea we talked about last time. So if it was only that, I would multiply by square root of 5. It would need one more 5. If it was only that, I'd multiply by square root of 2. But it's both of them at the same time. So there was something we did before that when I multiplied it out, all the radicals canceled. It's this idea it started with a C. Yeah. Conjugate. I love it. What's the conjugate of the bottom? Who remembers that shit? What's the conjugate of the bottom? Oh, 5 minus 2. Root 5 minus root 2. So I'll do the top. The top would just be 3 times those things. So 3 rad 5 minus 3 rad 2. What do you do? Please, dear God, don't put rad 15, of course, right? That's crazy. Don't have a rad. How the hell does it get inside? So it's just 3 times. But now you guys do the bottom. Don't buy the bottom up. Appreciate some of you guys apparently are doing it in your head. That's fine. You can do that. So what do you get? What's rad 5 times rad 5? 5. And then I get rad minus rad 10 plus rad 10. So the middle terms cancel. And then rad 2 times rad 2? Two. 2. So I get 3 rad 5 minus 3 rad 2 over 3. So all the 3's cancel. So you just get rad 5 minus rad 2. That's kind of neat. Kind 
Because what's being divided by 3? Both of these. 3 times something divided by 3, the 3's cancel. You undo what you did. Instructions might say simplify, or they might say rationalize the denominator, blah, blah. start to realize the math that you have this basic idea and then there could be a situation where there's more stuff in there. The idea doesn't change. So I got more crap in there, but what's the idea? What am I going to multiply by? Two rad 11. Two rad 11. Minus. Three rad 2. So then you just do that. You just foil that stuff out. You know the bottom has to come out to be a nice number, a nice integer. So if you don't get an integer on the problem, you have, on the bottom, you have done something wrong. The most common thing people do is they just multiply by this itself. That doesn't make any sense. You're not going to get that middle stuff canceled like you want. It's got to be the difference of squares pair, that conjugate thing. Go ahead, do that. Finish it out. Basically, two foiling problems. This one you got to do on paper, so if you're just looking at it, I know you're not doing it. Yes? I'm having trouble with the foiling part. So, what you can do is you can kind of rewrite this for yourself. So, you can really focus on what's going on. Right? I don't know if that's got to do with it, but now you just That has nothing to do with the root, but you're right. Four times two is eight. Right? There's stuff on the bottom here. Let's just focus on this piece. What? What's rad three times rad eleven? There you go. Keep going. You multiply together what you can. Seven. Three rad. 
Watch it. It's just going to keep doing that. Now do the bottom, spoil the bottom top. So you got a, you got a little bit more to write than normal. This is true. Because this is kind of like a mixed number in a way. Right, a whole piece and an irrational piece. There's a little bit more shit to carry around, but it's the same idea. Let me see if you guys get this bot. What, what's 2 rad 11 times 2 rad 11? 4 rad. Four times eleven. Yeah. Two times two is four. Rat eleven times rat eleven is eleven. Makes a whole eleven. And then the middle terms, you get minus six rat twenty-two plus six rat twenty-two. I wouldn't even write them down. And then you get three times negative three is negative nine. Rat two times rat two is two. Bunch of shit, right? There's nothing you can simplify. There's no like terms. That does happen sometimes. So on the top, so if we go this way, the top is just stays the same. I can't simplify any of those radicals. Right? There's no like terms anywhere. And the bottom, I get 44 minus 18. <coughs> The rest of it is kind of built off of old stuff. When you put it all together, it feels completely different, but I'm just foiling right there. I figure out conjugate, that's new, then I'm just foiling. Yes, I got radicals in there, so that feels new, but foiling doesn't give a shit. Just the foil process stays the same. Maybe. So if you have any lingering worry about something like this here, If I have like 4 rad 5 times uh, negative 3 rad 7, let me ask you this. What's 4 uh, a times negative 3 a squared? Negative 4 a Think about what you just did. Did you have any worry that you weren't able to put the 4 times the a some weird? No, of course not. You did 4 times negative 3 because you can, and a times a squared because you can't. Nothing different up here. Nothing. I can do this times this. And what's rad 5 times rad 7? Yeah. I mean, do, do you see what I'm trying to say? They're the exact same idea. I always get somebody worried, why doesn't that 4 go to the, well, why doesn't that 4 go to that a? never worried about that before. And I understand that we have numbers in here, but they are radicals. They can only go together with other radicals. I like it. I like it. Okay. All right. I'm excited because I, I might be able to show you the complex number, the, the not real number video today. Uh, it's going to be some funky shit. Okay, any lingering questions about all that? We basically just finished 10.5. So we're going to do 10.6, and then we'll see if I have time to show you that video. I think it's really well put together. I didn't do it so heavy. Excuse me. On this one, you just multiply the negative 3 and that's it? Finish like that? Yeah, there's nothing else to do, right? It's not added to any other piece. All it is is this times this. Like here, is there any more you can do? No, same thing here. I combined everything I could. I'm done. Okay. 
Um, so 10, 6. So now that we have, let's see, what have we done? We learned exactly what the hell roots are. Then we learned how to multiply them, divide them, add them, subtract them, right? So the very next thing we do, anytime we have this new function, so the new function is this root function, we say, well, how does it act if it's in an equation? So, for example, if I had, so this is going to be radical, totally radical equations. Just do a very, very basic one. So I'll tell you this, the idea of solving equations, how to solve equations, it never changes. The basic idea does not change. What changes is what's in them. So let me just remind you guys real quick. So if I had 2x equals 8, how would you solve that? Because multiplication, the opposite is division. If I had x over 7 equals 11, how would you solve that? Because division, the opposite is multiplication. Ah, keep going, so we all go crazy. What's the opposite of square rooting? Um, Squaring. What's the opposite of a square root? A square. square. You guys, we've seen that before. Don't they kill each other when you, yes. So what am I going to do to both sides? I'm going to do the opposite thing. Isn't that the general idea how to solve any equation is to attack it with the opposite of what's making the x stuck? Why is the x not by itself? Two, kill it, divide. What's made? Seven, kill it, multiply. <coughs> square root, kill it, square. So over here, these cancel. What's the square root of x times the square root of x? x. Two squared is? Four. Let's check it. What's the square root of four? Two, Two. yeah. Now, for some reason, people, and I don't blame you because there's been a lot of weird shit. They put absolute value down here, or they put plus or minus 4. Plus or minus 4 is no good. What's the square root of negative 4? We don't know yet. It's not real, right? Square root of negative 4, not real. So the answer can't be also negative 4. Like it. So let me up the ante a little bit here. Um, what about cube root of x minus 5 equals 2. This class is right next to the parking garage a lot. No, no, careful. I, I, I know what you mean, but be careful how you say it. There's no multiplication involved. I'm going to cube both sides. Yeah, just cube both sides. Because that's the opposite of cube root. So this side, these just kill each other. That's why I did that. That's why you did that. And over there I get 8. So the next is 13. Woohoo! So we combine what we know about radicals, but they're the opposite of powers. There's kind of like these inverse powers. And what we know about how to solve equations, and then these become not too hard. Now, let me show you where there's a couple of trouble spots, right? And they're not even major. Do you remember, recall, what would you do with, with this? Would you do any work? No. Thankfully not. What would you just write? No solution. You can't have absolute value equal to negative a number. The hell? Right? Right? Remember that? Right. So now, if I had square root of x plus 7 equals negative 4, for very much the same reason, by definition, radicals come out positive. This is the primary root. This is the principal root. That's the word. I knew it was hard to It can't come out negative. So there's no solution. Now watch this evilness, though. The same way as this would, if you did the two cases, you would get two answers, neither of which work. This is still no solution. If you did this one, 
you could square both sides, right? And you get x plus 7 equals 16. You get x equals 9. You circle it, and you get it wrong because it just doesn't work. Try it. Try it. What's 9 plus 7? What's 9 plus 7? 16. Square root is 16. Positive 4, not negative 4. So the answer you get is not good. You shouldn't even have had to do any work at all. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So there's a lot of similarities between what you've got to be careful about with absolute values and what you've got to be careful about with radicals, which kind of makes sense because remind me what's the square root of x squared? No? No? Yes, yes. So that's, they're related in a way, right? The answer can only come out positive. They are directly related like that. So uh, look at this problem. Um, which one, Jeff? Sure. I love this problem. I get to make yet another stupid joke, but I didn't like this joke. So the way you saw these, what, remember what we had to do when the absolute value wasn't by itself yet. Same thing I have to do here. Look, I want you to really notice this. Um, if I squared both sides right now, that would so freaking suck because I'd have to foil this. Do you guys see that? You can't just square each piece. You have to write it twice. Oh, my God. So what I'd much rather do is do what first? Yeah. So here's what it is. This is kind of like a Tyrant 101 class. If you have a radical element, isolate the element and then kill it. Right? So how you solve these, get the radical part by itself, and then you kill it. Right, you drop the square bottom. So you're going to subtract 5. Now it looks just like the ones we were doing. Right? Now I square. be 38 over 4, which is 19 over 2. What's up? 9.5. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you guys are alright? You guys are alright? Okay. So let me see if I can make one that has another issue with it before I do the one with two radicals in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this would be nice. So here's something else that people freak out about. Believe it or not, this, this has a neat little tiny issue. Let's see if anybody has any worries with this. So of course, what's the first step? It's already the radicals isolated, so I can kill it now. Square, yeah. Square both sides. Subtract five. Divide by four. Do you guys, uh, all right, first off, you might be this person. Is anybody worried that the answer came out negative? It's okay if you are. But it's completely fine that it came out negative. Completely. When I put a negative 1 in, what do I get? Negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. It's because of this adding of 5. It, you could have negative x values all day long, as long as it doesn't make the inside of this negative also. It didn't. You are going to want to check your answers, just to be sure that you didn't miss something. So you can have a negative answer, but the... The answer can be negative for x, because it doesn't make... The inside negative. Right. But going back to the other example of the square root of x plus 7 equals negative 4 and it's no solution, it can't, you can't have negative. The result of a square root can't be negative. Okay. And the inside can't be negative. But x can. But x can totally be negative because it could still end up positive inside. Yeah. Um, but the result, so could a cube root result be? Cube roots are cool, right? We know cube roots can handle negatives inside, they can handle 
So I, let's do this one. Oh, let's see. This one you can't stop and just put no solution because it has an odd root. Odd roots and odd powers are completely cool with negatives. They have no problem. It's the even ones that are all uptight. So here, what would I do? Cube it. Yeah, cube both sides. I have a special, like, I have a special feeling of sympathy for the people that for some reason the three stays alive here, and then they do all, oh my god, it died, right? You don't have to cube that, it died. Don't do that to yourself. E equals negative 8. So 2x equals negative 7, so x is negative 7 over 2. So especially because it's a cube root, I don't care about the negative, but even if it wasn't uh, an odd root, a negative answer still could be okay. Um, so for the one that you did first, you said that it was 5 plus, the one that you just erased, so it was 5 plus, where, what if it was something minus, like 5 minus? Oh, okay, let's do one like that. 7 yet. So let's make it 4 minus, just to be that way. Let's make it even like this. Oh, shit, this is again. Uh, and then let's make the inside all freaky. Oh, I love all this shit. Let's see. And then let's make this, uh, let's make this 2. OK. So the exact same things we had to do with actual values, I still have to do here. In fact, in general, you isolate the part that has your x in it and then you start attacking why it's stuck in something. So this part has max in it. So what's the very first thing I'm going to do? Yeah, subtract 4. Dear God, it's not 2, right? So subtract 4. So I get negative 2. Rad this equals negative 2. I don't stop and say no solution because I haven't got my radical isolated yet. What do I do next? Divide by negative 2 because it's times, right? So then I get rad 3 minus 4x equals 1. See, so that's fine. See, if your radical is not by itself, you have to get it by itself. If here we get what I got in the negative, we would have stopped and said no solution. But we're, we got a positive. Oh, shit. Then you square it, same as before. So then you subtract 3, divide by 4. Yeah, like it. Very nice. Okay, so the next level is not quite the double radical yet. Here's the next level. Whole number level. Maybe we should start over. Eight. Okay. Uh, what about this bad boy? Let's, let's start off nice, Jeff. Um, oh, yeah, I should probably make it work. It would be really nice. That should work. Okay. What's new here? Yes, there's an X on both sides. Do you know the sign of this number? That's such a weird question, but do you know what x is? Of course we don't. We haven't solved yet. So right now, we have no idea if this is negative or positive. So you're always going to do the work when there's a variable, because if at the end I get x equals negative 2, I'll bet you anything it, it can't possibly work, because it's going to make this side negative. So what do I do? The process doesn't give a shit that there's an x here. Square both sides. The radical's by itself, so now I can kill the little prison it's in. Bomb that thing. Sure, 
let's change all the colors now. I'm going to use red again. So I'll do this side. Oh, man. So again, you can see some of you guys maybe are making this mistake already, or you can see how some people might think there's still a square here, and they'll square this out, and they make it much harder than it's supposed to be. Don't do that to yourself. What do I get over here? And the other level is, if I do this, what have I done wrong? Or some of you guys are like, that's what I got. What did I do wrong? How do I square x minus 3? Got to write it twice, and then foil it. I lost my middle term, right? Let me write this bad boy twice. Minus 3x minus 3x. So I think our brain thinks, oh, we got all these things to do. It can't possibly still, yes, it's always that. You always have to do that. Now, what do I do? Not quite yet. After I get it equal to zero. So I want to move this stuff over so I get this side to be zero. Are you guys kind of with me? So hopefully at this point, you've, you're, nowhere in your brain is the, well, that's not this chapter. <laughs> the minute we learn something, it can show up whenever it needs to. It's just another tool. So now I've got this. I don't care where it came from. It's got a higher power. Oh, shit. I better get this equal to zero. Thankfully, I made one that doesn't work. That's always a nice job. How do you factor that? So x is either, no oh, see shit, 5 or 2. Let me, every time this happens with math, I want to really make it clear that it is not math's fault. That's why I started off with what I, we had no idea what x could be up here, so we had no idea if this was negative or not. Now we know that one option for x is 2. Could x be 2? No, because then you get square root equals negative. You guys see that? 2 minus 3 is negative 1. That can't be. You've got to check the answers you get. Why did I get an answer that didn't work? Because I squared both sides. So if this was a 2, that would have been negative, but when I squared it, it would have become positive. So by squaring, I get answers that won't work. But there was no other way to solve the damn thing. Okay, maybe. I should stop apologizing so much. It's not math's fault. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just the fault of the way it works. So throw that out. Does 5 work? 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. Yes. 2 equals 2. Okay, yes. So again, just like before, I've got to see both answers, and I've got to see you throw that one out. Don't just not write the two. Then I'm like, did they not see the two? Okay, maybe. Um, in order for it to be right, it actually has to be positive? No. Because look, that was positive. Where did you get the equal to? Equal to. Huh? So here was the original, right? Let's try to check this. Put two in. If I put a 2 in, I get square root of 2 minus 1 equals 2 minus 3. I get square root of 1 equals negative 1. Is that true? No. So I can't use that. It comes out false. Doesn't work. Throw it out. So we've seen answers before that didn't work. You have to throw them out. I like it. I know it sucks when you did nothing wrong and you get an answer that doesn't work. It's just a part of the process. It's a little bit of a compromise. Squaring makes it easier to do, and then sometimes you might get answers that don't work. All right. So here, you guys try this one. That's all I hope I make one that works. Nine. You Roman numeral nine. Okay. Why did I make it hard, Jeff? I don't know, man. Just... Um, yeah, that'll work. Okay. So you know it's got at least one answer. 